My friends, we have to talk about something very important today, especially from the perspective of being a member of the Catholic Church. It's called obedience. In an honest examination of conscience for the Church in the West, the Church is in crisis because we are not being, as a people of God, obedient to the Pope, obedient to the Magisterium. And I just want to talk through some of the elements of why we are called to be obedient. Uh, and let's start with the most basic objection. The objection can run, look, um, what about freedom? God gave me freedom and I should be free to be able to choose what of the Catholic Church I want and what I don't. That's part of God's gift to me and one of his greatest gifts. Well, you're right about the greatest gifts. You're just wrong about not the church, but even elements of basic logic, uh, just basic ph uh, philosophy. And I, I'm not saying this facetiously, I'm just helping us to uh, analyze sometimes our thought processes, which would lead us to say, A, I'm Catholic, and B, I am free to, to disobey the magisterium. Uh, the B is problematic. So let's go through it. Let's talk about freedom in general. When you say you're free, um, we have to realize that every choice limits freedom. Uh, you're not free to go to the beach and go to the park at the same time. If you freely choose to go to the beach, that means you're also freely choosing not to go to the park. If you freely choose to be part of an organization, a company, uh, even a, a fraternal group, a, a club, then you choose to follow the dictates, the, the, the rules of that club, of that organization. If it's something more formal, sometimes you even have to do a contract to make sure that you will abide by the nature of that club. Or what? Or you'll be removed from the club. And therefore, if you're removed from Club X because you have broken the rules of Club X, there's a certain lack of authenticity in saying, well, uh, I'm still a member of Club X, when in fact you are not. So this is basic for all choices, and I think we understand that. Now, when you choose to be a Christian, you are also in that choice saying, I will not be a Buddhist or a Muslim or Jewish by religion because none of the latter three groups accepts Jesus Christ as divine. And if they do, in the case of something like Hindu, uh, they would accept other people as divine. And that also means you cannot be Christian because to be Christian means I hold Jesus to be divine and human uh, my Savior, my Redeemer, and Him alone. Uh, this is, uh, you know, obviously within the context of the Trinity, but you can't have other gods uh, outside the one God who is three in persons. So, to choose to be Christian means I'm also choosing not to be Hindu and, and, and Muslim and, uh, and of a Jewish religious uh, tradition. Now, if you choose to become Catholic, what you're saying is, I believe in the creed of the Catholic Church, in the teachings of the Catholic Church, and I believe in the constant ongoing teachings of what's called the Magisterium, the official teaching authority of the Church, unique to the Holy Father. Now, the Magisterium constitutes Pope, the Pope and bishops in union with the Pope, but uh, the buck stops with the Holy Father. Take, for example, Jesus and the, and the 12, uh, 12 Apostles. If you had one apostle who disagreed with Jesus, well, guess what? It, it didn't go that way. Uh, that wasn't sufficient to say, I'm a follower of Jesus. Even if you had 10 apostles or, or 12 apostles disagreeing with Jesus, uh, that was not being a true follower of Jesus. To follow Jesus means you accept Jesus and you follow his teachings as definitive. Okay. So the same is analogous today with the vicar of Jesus. The Pope is the vicar of Jesus Christ. If you choose to be Catholic, what you're saying is, I will follow the Pope. I will follow all of his teachings. I believe that the Holy Spirit guides the Pope. Uh, I believe the Holy Spirit has protected the Pope from error and his office, his teaching office from error for over 2,000 years. I believe he can even speak infallibly in the sense that the Holy Spirit will prevent him from error in a solemn declaration or in an ecumenical council's confirmation. That's what we say. When I say I'm Catholic, I, I believe in what St. John Bosco used to call the Catholic Triangle. I believe in the Pope and I obey him. I believe in the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist. I believe in the Blessed Mother as my spiritual mother. So, when you say I'm Catholic, that means 
I am exercising my freedom to embrace these teachings. Therefore, if you reject a teaching, which is oftentimes called dissent, if you're formally dissenting from the church, to that degree ontologically, I mean, by ontologically, I mean philosophically, and what you're doing, to that degree, you're no longer Catholic in this sense. In the sense that you, as St. James says, you have become the magister, you have become the teacher, you have become the master that you're following. Now, God gives you the freedom to do that, but he doesn't give you the freedom to do it and still call yourself Catholic because that's a contradiction in terms. Catholic means I buy the whole nine yards of what it means to follow the Holy Father. I accept all his moral teachings. I accept the social teachings of the church insofar as they're applied from the moral teachings. I accept the body of doctrine, which is called the Depositum Fidei. I believe. That's what credo means in Latin. I believe. I believe in the creed. So you see why the church, for example, why the Catholic Church says you don't want to receive Holy Communion if you do not believe in what the church teaches because that would be a sacramental error in the sense that to receive the Eucharist is to say, I believe in everything. I am one with this church and I accept the sacrament of unity for that reason. But it would be, uh, it would be contrary in the whole understanding of what a sacrament is, particularly in the sacrament of the Eucharist, which is the sacrament of unity, to say, no, I accept a, x, y, and, x, y, and z of the Catholic Church, but I reject a, b, and c. Well, insofar as you're doing that, you would not be acting as a Catholic, as a member of the Catholic Church. Uh, some years back, uh, Bishop Bruskovitz in, uh, in Nebraska did an act of great love, uh, although it was not always perceived that way. He told members in his diocese that if you're Catholic for abortion, so-called Catholic for abortion, if you're so-called Catholic and a, and, and a Mason, if you're Catholic and a member of the Pius X Society, which has broken off from the church, I'm going to give you a, 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 some time to ponder this, to prayerly consider uh, returning to the church but after which time I'm going to have to do an excommunication. And some could say, oh gosh, that's so harsh. But you see, the excommunication is saying you're not a member of the church. And that gives a new opportunity to examine, to pray, to, to, to recommit, uh, realizing that in fact you're not a member of the church when you don't hold to the church's teachings. And so isn't it a lot more loving for a courageous bishop like Bishop Bruskovitz to let people know they're out of the body of Christ rather than to let people think that they are in where spiritually and truly they're not. That seems to me to be not having the, the, the love of sacrifice to let people know the truth. So, what does it mean to be Catholic? To be Catholic means I accept all the doctrinal, dogmatic, moral teachings of the Church. I am one in mind and heart with the Holy Father even when He does not speak infallibly. That comes from the Vatican, Second Vatican Council, Lumen Gentium uh, 25. Some said, well, you know, the Vatican II changed all that. Vatican II loosened things up. Read the ink of Vatican II. Lumen Gentium 25 says clearly that we must give a religious assent of mind and will to the manifest mind of the Pope, even when he is not speaking infallibly. And I know this is difficult for many Catholics, especially in the moral area, uh, artificial birth control. And... Isn't it interesting that it's in areas of morals where sometimes we choose not to obey when it gives the idea that these moral elements are arbitrary, uh, that the church is just coming up with rules to, to test our fidelity. No, this is about us. These moral rules safeguard our peace, our marriages, our state of grace. And so, my friends, my simple message to you, if you're a member of the Catholic Church, I plead with you, obey the church. Obey the magisterium. Thank God for the Pope that Jesus has given us. And trust that God is far too wise to place the souls of 1.03 billion people in the hands of a man alone. No, this man, this office is guided by the Holy Spirit. And I ask you, if there has been fault in that area, go to confession. Get back to the peace of the church. Breathe with the two lungs of the church in the sense of uh, the East and the West, the truth that's contained in both the Western and Eastern traditions, locked under, safeguarded, peacefully within the magisterium, obedient to the Pope. Because then, my friends, we have peace, we advance the cause of the Church, 
and we please Our Lady, who is the ultimate obedient one. If she was not obedient, we wouldn't be here in the sense of having a Redeemer and having a church at all. So I ask you, and I ask in a special way, for those who struggle with disobedience, ask Our Lady for the grace to conform our mind and heart to revelation. In passing, I can say, you know, as a doctor of theology and having taught 25 years, it's not such a big deal for me to say, well, I think maybe the church knows a little bit more than I do after 15 years of study and 25 years of research and teaching because it's comparing it to 2,000 years of inspired protection, inspired by the Holy Spirit. So let's all be humble. Let's thank God for the magisterium and let's obey the church. This is Mark Miravalli with Mary Cass saying thank you. God bless you.